Okay, we're moving into phase two uh, of what could be considered a workout or a warm up. Um, this phase I use pretty much for any type of cardiovascular activity. I use it for golf and I also use it uh, as an activation of muscles. This allows me to kind of go out at full capacity rather than to walk before I run, so to speak. So getting onto the ball, technique is more of a squat. I use the back of my hands to find the ball. I pull it in and I move down into my low squat position. Now I purposely chose a 55 centimeter ball, although my size is typically a 65. Most uh, people have a ball at home, whether you're tall, using a shorter ball, modification, whatever the case is. Uh, with our ball activity, you see my heels are back underneath the ball. That's an important concept that most people miss. And then from there, I go into a short squat. The short squat should be as real as possible. I like 20 to 30 second uh, increments. You see I'm not using a big bounce. I'm not coming up so that if I lose my ball, you know, I can use the back of the hand to pull back into position, but nonetheless, you know, this is to get into the deeper knee structures, which typically aren't activated. Now, you also notice that I want to be able to do this type of activity with or without a ball. So if you don't have one, do it anyway, just make it real, okay? From that point, one thing that I started doing a lot of is getting into a calf stretch where I roll over top of the ball like this. That gives me a great stretch of my heel cord or my Achilles tendon, and it gives the opportunity to kind of get those ankles warmed up. That's great for squat mobility and for depth. Rolling out into the ball, a general thoracic extension helps. It's a great break that we typically give to our patients who work at home or you know, have the access to, uh, to a ball at home just to open up the upper back. When you're on the ball in this position, your head should be as neutral as possible, almost as if you're laying on a flat bench. From there, you can engage the pelvis. As long as you have those mechanics down, move it straight into a bridge and tilt at the end. I don't want to be distended. I want to keep my abs in, not necessarily contracting because my emphasis is my glutes and my hamstrings. So here's my bridge to tilt. I can rep those out anywhere from 10 to 20 repetitions whatever you need, whatever you feel. It could be more than one set, or it could be a series uh, in between other ex exercises. From there, this is a single leg glute set, emphasizing hamstring and gluteal muscles and lumbar stability as well as some balance. On these, as a warm up, I typically do 10 on each side, and I'll break it down eight, six, four, two from that point. It could be three sets of five. It could be anything you needed to do. On a training day, I'll go up to 20 repetitions per leg and break down from that point. And again, same in range. Once we get to that point, and again, using it is not necessarily a training or rehabilitation tool, but as an activation tool to make sure everything is firing. It's good as a pregame for all workouts and athletic events. I'm going to get on the ball and just as a quick review, single hip extension, one of the most important exercises on the ball because it activates the muscles on the opposite side of the leg you're raising. That goes along with walking, jogging, running, and most events. If I come back to here, a single arm extension is good for balance and activation. And once you have those going, and I would typically prescribe three sets of 10 per side, I stick to one side at a time because I feel that we get better activation rather than alternating. Then we move to a double extension where I'm focusing on my shoulder blades. And then as this evolves, it's nice to break it in, pull the shoulder blades down and back, come into a rocket man, move back into a superman. Rocket Man and Superman. Excuse me. Rocket Man, Superman, Rocket Man, Superman. Ten in each direction. 